It's my great pleasure and privilege today to welcome Kenny Shields to Kelly FC TV. Kenny, great times at Kilmarnock, highlighting the beating Rangers home and away in the same season, beating Celtic at Parkhead, beating Celtic in the League Cup final in 2012, but the highlight for me of course was beating Air United in the biggest ever Ayrshire Cup final. Yeah. To, with your son scoring the winning goal. Uh -huh. Sitting back at night, you must look back at your time in Kilmarnock and all your achievements and be pleased and proud of what you did then. Mm -hmm. Very much so and it's, um, it's very difficult to put them in order of you know what was your best moment or when, which you enjoyed the most. It's very difficult to say that because there's different emotions involved. The emotion of relief when we scored against Air United, that was a big emotion for me and the emotion of achievement when we won the, the final against Celtic, you know, you, get, you felt those emotions at that time. And beating Rangers twice was quite, you know, I thought it was very good because the one we won at Ibrox was probably our best performance because I think if we look back at it, it was something like they had come out of the traps. They felt as if we really need to show the supporters that we, we're going into administration. This is a, yeah. this is unfair. There was a siege mentality about their approach, and um, we were really minnows in comparison because of the nature of what was going on. It was all about Rangers and about this administration, and it was, it was universal talk. Everybody was talking about it, and their players were right up for it. You know, in the in the tunnel they were. You know, really, and the crowd was absolutely. Well, we were well up for a bit now. Thought not half. Just had to turn up that day and come yep. on, it would roll over. But and it we, never happened. We just put the game into portions and we said, you know, there's six, 15 minutes. I can remember it well. We we compartmentalised it into six, 15 minutes and let's get through the first 15 and, and achieve a clean sheet and drop off the game. And gradually, you know, we start to take the game. And I was amazed how well our boys done because I think we had something like 60, 60 odd percent possession in that game against their 30, 30 odd, 34, 66, 34 and around that area. Uh, and I remember thinking afterwards what an achievement this was for those players because the odds were all stacked against them. And, you know, because they had that tribalism and the siege mentality of, wow, you know, we're being unfairly treated. We're going to go out there and, um, you know, show them what we are and who we represent. And so there was that affection from the players to the supporters, and you could feel it. Yeah, there was a massive energy coming from there. And of course, we won one 0 and and that was that was a fantastic feeling. And it was winning that game, and to look up into the wee corner that they had because. It was a full house and there was very little space provided for our supporters and I, and I think it was reduced massively that Actually day. I think it was maybe only 200 got in or 300 maybe more but it was very very little and we uh, were sort of like we weren't in the script and, and that was a good feeling. Come back before all those great times at Kilmarnock, how did you come about becoming Mix's assistant and why Kilmarnock? Uh, Mix had contacted me uh, and said, look, can I, I, I'd, I spoke to Mixu just before um, the, the wee guy, oh, what's his name, he's a very good friend of mine, um, Parky, Donald Park, had left as Mixu's assistant. So I contacted, I contacted Mixu because my son was there as well and I said, Mixu, look, if you need an assistant or if you, someone to, to join your coaching staff, um, at a list end, and they'd be very, you know, willing to come over and, and help you if you if you needed that. And he said, "Well, bring me back Friday." But it was something like five days after Parky had left, uh, Mixie resigned. So, you know, he said to me, "I'm sorry, I'm going," and that sort of stuff. So. 
there was no job there then. Was this at Hibs? This was at Hibs. Hibs sorry, sorry. Yeah. And then when he got the Kilmarnock job, he called me and said, look, could you become the assistant manager? And I said, I need to speak with my club, which I did. I was the head of the academy at Tranmere in England. 2010, so, yeah, 2010. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I come up and then that was it. We mm -hmm. got the job. Yeah, my psychology, psychology degree, not easy to say for somebody like myself. Not many people in football have that. Why did you go about getting that degree? Was that something you saw that you could put into football? Yeah, and football. You see, I have to say this because football is such a... Um, all sports, from the shoulders up, is so important. You know, it's the way people think. And I've always been uh, studious in that line of work. And uh, I went from a level five degree and uh, down in Warwick University and I was really up for that. And it was very time consuming, but I applied it and it stood by me. You know, I've, I've used it a lot in terms of motivation because you can be the best player in the world, but if you don't think properly or you don't have an emotion to help you achieve that, you know, mental strength is so important. In everything we do, every every single person needs to have some kind of mental strength. Especially in any sport, every sport. Especially team. sport. Top sportsmen always seem to have a great... Yes. Sport sign. is such a... It's such a... demanding of, of how you think and, and, and your emotions and how you feel. It's so demanding. So you have to be prepared for that. And so you could actually say before the League Cup final in 2012, was that a specific ploy to use mind games with, yes, I, with, with Neil Lennon? Because it was quite obvious to everybody in the press. Well, we did sing up the treble, and I'm not trying to be a smart ass, but we did sing it up, and all the interviews were orchestrated by the players in that week. We knew there would be a high profile on our players as well, and they mentioned the treble, and uh, it was when they, there was a disputed penalty decision at the end and Neil was really angry and he said, look, that referee's cost us the treble. And they hadn't even played the semi-finals of the Scottish Cup at that time, so I thought that was being disrespectful to uh, Hearts, who ended up beating them, am I correct? That's I think, right, yeah. in the semis. And, um, or maybe it was St Mirren, but I think it was Hearts. And, also it give them motivation, so it was the wrong time, wrong place type thing, but mm. Neil's a good lad and, and I don't want to say anything negative about him, you know, but I'm just saying that we it's obvious that it was around the dressing rooms and yeah. I looked at the age of their team as well and I thought there's areas we can uh, we can target here to, to get them to think that way. Managers make many substitutions over the year, some work, some don't, but your decision to bring on detail in that game and 73 minutes for Gary Harkins. Was that made as a part of the plan before the game to keep command in the game as long as possible and then throw in the extra forward to to try and go and win the game, which ultimately... Would well, you're, you're talking about psychology. That was actually a psychological move if you look at it in in deeper realms to, to how we were thinking. I always had the feeling that if we're in the game, we have to be outside the box because I've watched Celtic play against other Premier League teams so much and when it gets to even Stevens round the hour mark or an Urquius around 70, 72 minutes, uh, teams sit back psychologically because of the pressure, not just the pressure of, of Celtic's possession and, and, and putting you under pressure, but the pressure of trying to, uh, of psychologically thinking we've done well here, we're still in this game, we must not make a mistake. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the power of language, that's when they do make a mistake. So, teams were always going to park ahead. How many times have Celtic won in the last few minutes? Yeah. And uh, because teams sit back to protect what they have, especially in cup ties, and they look at, can we get to extra time? So I had to remove those thoughts from their head. And uh, I did intimate to them. I didn't tell all the players this, but I did say to one or two that, of the experienced ones, 
if we're still in this game, I'm going to bring on another striker because that they'll will throw them. them. They'll not expect that and it will throw them. So Hefs and, and Dieter went up front and uh, in the last 20 minutes or so that was left in the game, that was always my intention. Whether we were, if we had been 1 0 up at that time, I might not have done it. If we had been 1 0 down, Celtic would have been expecting it because teams throw their dice when the chips are down. But I wanted to throw my dice before the chips, and it worked because the, uh, they were pushing full backs on and, and they left a little bit, they left some spaces. But we built it through, and we'd, we'd probably more possession than Celtic that day. And we didn't go there and defend. It wasn't that no. type of performance. We had plenty of chances. Definitely. Before, before we even scored, we had plenty. Dean, Dean should have scored three. Uh, you know, in terms of 50 50 chances, there was no open goals. But, you know, we. Have, from the Celtic quarter, they were always talking about the save of Cami, which was very, very valid. Uh, and Cami. In the first minute, uh, Dudu gave the ball away. The first three minutes, I don't know that. And Momo had his moment. Uh, but to be fair, time? it wasn't so much Cami's save, it was his presence of mind to come and be and stand big against Hooper. And right. he stood up, right. to be fair, and you know. But the save I was going to mention was the, the one from uh, Stokes' header. Was that one of the best saves you've seen? Yeah, it was a fantastic save because the ball came across and he changed the trajectory more or less back where it came from and Cammy's followed the flight and he's coming this way and he's going on to his strong muscles, his quadriceps to go this way and then he's had to reverse his quadriceps to go the other way and then in the same movement to get down low and goalkeepers will tell you the hardest one to save is a ball that's headed down as opposed to a shot and it was a fantastic save uh, and uh, but Hookie shouldn't have let uh, Scott Brown get the cross on. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing how you remember these things. Yeah. Nelson's yeah. tackle on Stokes at the time, mm -hmm. my heart was settling in my mouth when Wally Collin booked him for diving. I've been seeing it again, you think it was Wally Collin made the, the right call? I can tell you something now, I've studied that and Stokes was going on to his weak side. He's taken it across the path of, uh, of Michael and he's went on to his left side and the goal became a little smaller and I could see it in the replays, not at the time I admit, but he did go to the left side and probably went through his head was, I'm going to go over here. There was no contact and they went out that night, the players, to Kilmarnock and they went to uh, out for a drink in Glasgow and the, Glasgow, the Celtic players were in one of the places that they go to in Glasgow and Stokes said to Nels that yeah I did go over looking the penalty which is good enough for me yeah. but I think it would have been, you know they wouldn't have scored the penalty anyway we know that. Cammy would have saved it. Yeah, anyway. definitely. The, the day he was having, there was no question he would have saved it. And I don't think we deserved, sometimes you don't get what you deserve, but I don't think we would have deserved that either. And on on uh, the game itself, oh, do you know what I think, and no one will ever be able to answer this for me, but going through it in my head again, that was round about the time that Liam's father took the massive cornery. And I think that emotion, I think it was, was right at the final whistle and I'm sure, but I never can prove this, and I spoke to Liam about it, I'm sure it was that moment that his father had thought it was a penalty, because my heart was going up and sure all the supporters course, was as absolutely. well. You get it in moments in a game and, and, and I think, I still, I still think that's had an impact on, on that. What was your best goal? Why were you at command? What goal stands out for you? Oh. Well, here's one for you. Towards the end of the following season, was it? We we lost three one at home to Celtic. Now, one thing about my teams and our teams, sorry, 
I feel we never really got the credit we deserved because most of the goals, and this is uncharacteristic of, of how teams score goals against Celtic, almost all the goals we scored against Celtic, against Rangers, were from open play. And the usual media balance or bias in the paper was talking about the goal that Celtic scored against us, where it was something like 16 passes, they said. But it wasn't 16 passes, it was, it was because I went over it again. It was eight passes, then an interception, and then another six. And they were raving about that. But we scored a goal against Celtic, and it was Killian Sheridan. He scored, we had uh, 12, 13 passes against Celtic, mm. who were champions. And the game we lost 3-1, I'll go over it again in my memoirs. But it was that, that was a fantastic goal. But the best goal we scored was against Hearts, and we scored three that day. Uh, it was a 3-1 or 3-0 and their, goal, their goalkeeper kicked the ball out from a goal kick and I think it was Fou or no it might have been Pascal won the first phase and we got it back to our goalkeeper and we built it up and this was never mentioned by the, mm. these professional media guys every player in our team touched the ball mm. for that goal so that's against the one that stands out. That's the one that stands out for me. Yeah. We built it back, we prompted and probed, we kept possession, we took it back to our full back and back into Was that the element that keeper. finished it? Was that that goes that goal I'm thinking of? No. Who was um or was this? It wasn't Killian's hat trick, it was Hef's. Paul Heffernan, I think. Right. I'll go over it again. But I think it was that at that stage we were winning at Hearts Andrew. <laughs> if you'd have phoned me yesterday, if you'd have phoned me yesterday, I would have went and, and got my, done my research. But it was—I'll look it up again, right. and and some of the supporters might be able to answer right. that. But every player in our team touched the ball in in the passage of play, and for me that was brilliant. I wonder was it the one where we transferred it over to the left and William Gross I was say, was it put it in? He didn't score, but he put it back in for. Either Killian to finish in our halves. I think it was Paul Heffernan. Right. Because at that stage, every time we wanted to play at Tynecastle every week, because we seemed to run into 3 nothing or 3 1. But a great record at yeah. Tynecastle, which I know. obviously has great memories for all yeah. Kelly fans for obvious reasons. Definitely. Fowey even touched the ball in that passage. <laughs> <laughs> he, never, he probably never scored. But, <laughs> but that was good. Who was the best player you've ever had the pleasure to work with and all your manager who you've wow. not just come on up? Aramenko was. Oh, the intelligence. You're not allowed to say Dean. No, I know that. <laughs> well, he's Dean's probably the best finisher, the most natural finisher, believe it or not, because he's he was a great he's a great finisher. But in terms of, you see, you can't really go past Aaron Michael. We've got to look at his game, and, and for someone who's not athletic, to have his presence of mind and his vision. And, you know, he always excelled when he received the ball being marked. That's when we brought, not we, that's when he brought the best out in himself. When he had time and space, he wasn't just as effective, but it was great. I always said to the players, pass the ball to Lossa when he's marked. I'm telling you now, pass it to him when there's a man on him. Because if you pass the ball to Lossa, his first train of thought is the journey of the ball and how I'm going to deceive this guy. And he had that art. And, but not only did he do that, he found, he found a, an incisive pass or he, he, he played a little one-two round the corner and got it back. And, you know, I think he was... He's certainly the best player I've ever seen in a commander jersey in uh, he, George years. The way he thought, um, you know, and he's not the easiest to work with, Lassa, because... Uh, he's got a temper. No, not, not so much that as... Uh, he's like a conductor. He needs to be running the show. Yeah. And sometimes certain managers find him difficult to, to manage because a lot of managers want to run the show. Yeah. And they forget about the presence on the pitch where Lassa gets it and... He does something outstanding, and then the manager thinks, 
oh that was brilliant after he'd done it yeah. you know quite a lot of the stuff that he'd done was was just instinctive he couldn't tell you how he'd done it so some you know, of the, some of his range of passing you just 50 60 yard the passes weights, the backspin would, would be right to the guy's feet all, all of that to move or he would run it onto it all of that brilliant yeah. you know because he certainly brought the best out in Connor Salmon he made Connor Salmon he, he was big for Connor Salmon and then when he left when when Connor and left in the January, uh, Connor had eight, 18 goals up to January, and people forget this. You know, February, March, when Mixie left them, uh, two months, seven or eight weeks later, in March, there was a slight. Uh, how can I say it? You know, in our play, it, it depreciated a little bit and. Players were leaving at the end of that season. That's when we got that terrible hammering from Rangers to win the title in yeah. the last game, if you remember. And and then there was a rebuild required, um, and and it was difficult because there was such losing that pivotal point of the team yeah. where he's at the top of the field, and and Connor hadn't got the best hold up skills, but he lengthens the game for you. And you know, it took a little bit from Aaron Michael's game as well, yeah. Connor going. It wasn't all one way, because you need the man Connor, to make the runs. If Connor lengthens the game, it gives loss of more space yeah. in the middle of the park or at the top of midfield, and we didn't have that when when Connor left. Mm -hmm. So we had to try and look for something uh, similar to that. Mm -hmm. Now I looked for something similar in the summer, and then loss of it's away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's but uh, no, he was. He must be right up there as one of the best players I've worked with. Mm. One of the best players that I had no contribution to his performance, you know, because it's, his was off the cuff. Right. His was just an, an, natural. Yeah, and and there was I I didn't have any contribution. I didn't have to help him. I just had a channel to make sure that Lasso was, um, you know, okay on here and. You know, we, those type of players, there isn't. They have that little thing that could, yeah. could spark something. It's great they're going back to rugby park tomorrow. Are you looking forward to it? Because I'm sure the fans I'm, will be delighted to see you. I'm so excited because um, of the emotion that's there. You know, I'm a very emotional person, and, and I find that uh, it's it's really difficult when you think about it. Wow, I've been away over three years, three and a half now. Time flies past. No, sorry, I've only been away. Two, two and a bit. Two and a bit. Yeah, two and a bit. But you know, not when I go to a football club, I like to get to know people. Yeah. That's probably the way I am, and you're just you want to be yourself, but you also want to develop relationships, not on the pitch, not not just with your players, but with you the know community, the gal, the groundsman, and and the people that share your same emotions and the same feelings for the club. Wow, what a fantastic memories I had, you know, from there. It's, and I'm excited by, by going to, to see a, a lot of people tomorrow. Yeah. Good. Hopefully I can And a final message that. to the killer support, Kenny. Right. The most obvious and glaring one to me is to support Gary Locke, who I think has weathered the storm. And that's fingers crossed and hope and pray that he can continue to do that. Uh, he's been very intelligent in, in how he's put together the pieces. He's got two decent centre backs now who can come up uh, the pitch and, and help the team to get forward. Oh, they've, you know, they've drawn twice with Celtic this season. Yeah. You know, people, because, and Gary's a little bit of a victim and, and was Alan, because we've done so well against the old firm, a draw now is not seen as anything spectacular, which is unfair. I think it's fantastic, you know, to draw with Celtic and and to draw with Celtic and when Cel they drew with Celtic when two two when they were flying high. That's right. But uh, he's a lovely lad and and he's he's passionate about doing well, and I really really enjoy Gary Locke and we must get behind him to support him because you know a common denominator is is such a wonderful mechanism if everybody. Is feeling bad, and the manager's feeling bad, and the staff and the players are feeling down. 
then that negative energy will encapsulate the whole club and the, the whole community. But if Gary starts to feel good about the team, which transcends onto the players, which transcends onto the supporters, and then that goes to the boardroom and everybody's feeling good, that, that that's infectious, you know, and, and I think that's important that this is a little feel good, we're starting to recover and, and I think Kilmarnock can go on and do really well under Gary. Get a wee cup run going yeah, and, and get the people back. And if everybody can think that way, then it, if it doesn't work, at least we're providing a positive energy. Kenny, thank you very much. It's been a, a privilege to speak to you and I appreciate you giving up your time to come here this morning. Thank you, Kenny, Ian. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.